Hi, my name is Esther Kelly and this is my model project for Anatomy 202. It focuses on the effects epinephrine and norepinephrine have on the heart. These hormones are otherwise known as adrenaline and noradrenaline and are released by the adrenal medulla. They respond to what is known as the fight or flight response. Fight, being represented by the boxing gloves, and flight being represented by the guy running away. Although this may look daunting, to understand the role these hormones play in affecting heart rate, we must start on the cellular level. Both epinephrine and norepinephrine are hydrophilic and water soluble. Therefore, they are unable to cross the hydrophobic plasma membrane. Instead, they must bind to metapotropic receptors that function through secondary messengers, as drawn here in purple. In the case of epinephrine and norepinephrine, these specific second messengers are beta-1 adrenergic receptor proteins. Specific hormones and receptors remind me of those shape sorting cubes we used to play with as kids. In order for a shape to be able to enter the cube, you had to match the right shape to the right hole. Hormones also need this type of specific receptor in order to bind to a cell. Anyway, this binding causes the activation of a heterotrimeric G protein, which contains three subunits, alpha, beta, and gamma. You can see this G unit right here. The activation of this G protein causes one of the three subunits to split off of the others. This subunit is carrying guanosine diphosphate, abbreviated to GDP, as represented right here, which is then replaced by guanosine triphosphate, abbreviated to GTP, when the subunit is activated, which you can see here. The activated G protein subunit then diffuses throughout the plasma membrane until it meets with a membrane enzyme known as adenyl cyclase as pictured right here. Actually, I'll move my line just a little bit so that you can see the molecule a little bit better. This enzyme catalyzes the formation of cyclic adenosine monophosphate, otherwise known as CAMP. In order to do this, adenosine triphosphate, ATP, or what we'd refer to as energy, is needed. CAMP then activates protein kinase A, which allows for calcium to rush into the cell with three different ways. You can see the protein kinase A as represented there. One way is that it releases stored calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Another way is that it opens up T-type calcium ion channels, as pictured right here. This is calcium, and it opens these up just so that it can get into the cell very easily, just rushing in. Another way is that it promotes phosphorylation, which adds a phosphate group to the head of myosin, which in turn speeds up actin in myosin binding, and ultimately causes more muscle contraction. The sinoatrial node contains the pacemaker cells of the heart. These pacemaker cells determine heart rate by sending electrical impulses to the atrial ventricular node. The speed of these electrical impulses are what quote unquote speed up heart rate. In order to understand how the heart rate is impacted by epinephrine and norepinephrine, it is necessary to understand how a normal heart rate appears. You can see that. Similar things are happening. Sodium is rushing in during depolarization, and potassium is rushing in during repolarization. However, there are some definite differences. Hyperpolarization is much shorter, which allows for a rapid depolarization and a faster heart rate, which is controlled by the sympathetic nervous system during a fight-or-flight response. When the fight-or-flight response is over, the body wants to return to homeostasis. An enzyme known as phosphodiesterase Yes, I had to practice how to spell that. 
stops or decreases the amount of CAMP, which decreases the heart rate, allowing for homeostasis to return.